So today we're going to discuss different types of editing that are available to us and the most common ones so that you know what they are and you can know how useful it is to be able to communicate to others about what they are. So why understand editing types at all? So there's a couple of things. Well, I list basically three reasons that I think are the most important. Number one, if you're hiring an editor, you want to know that you've hired the right editor so that you're getting the service you expect, which is also number two. Because I mean, if you're hiring a copy editor, but you need a line editor, well, those are two different things. And sometimes people offer both services, but sometimes they don't. And you might not get what you think that you are paying for. So that is very important. And maybe perhaps you need a side hustle and you intend to hire out your own services as an editor and author. But again, you need to be able to talk to your client and say, this is what I offer and this is what it is so that it is universally understood. So there are different types of editing. The most common ones that we use are the first four. And I threw in number five just for a bonus. So we have content or developmental editing. Sometimes it's called either or. There's line editing, copy editing, proofreading, and mechanical editing. So when you're doing content development or developmental editing, you're looking at the story as a whole. So you might add or delete scenes or move entire sections of the story as needed to make it flow better. You're going to revise the draft to make significant changes. Now, we're not looking at any spelling, grammar, things like that at this moment. We're looking at the main story. So there are some different things that we can look at, like your plot. So the sequence of events, is it actually happening correctly? Is, are there plot holes? Are there gaps in the story? Um, number two, structure, is the order of events happening correctly? So, you know, if you're saying that something happened over here, but wait, over there, it wasn't there yet, and it would have made sense for it to be there. That is what content developing is all about, just to kind of flesh out what you've already got and make it better. So characterization. So this is the characteristics of your characters, places, and plot. Um, are they, you know, if this guy's a tough bully and then he starts like crying, well, there better be some serious trauma in there and, and you know, some background story. But we can't have the tough bully suddenly turn around and be afraid. <laughs> you know, there there's your characters and your, your places and your plots have to stay true throughout the story or it has to have a significant reason why. And then there is pace. So this is the speed of events that is happening in your book. And sometimes your events, you know, will have faster speed and sometimes there'll be a slower speed but it has to be consistent to what is actually happening so like maybe there's an action scene and there's a lot more speed and a lot less details because you know you really got to get them to that point but then later on you might slow it down and have you know more description more dialogue and the pace slows down a little bit but it's important that the pacing reflects what is going on in the story and that it's not off so that people are kind of, you know, discombobulated and pulled out of the narrative. That way, you know, you want them absorbed in your story, not pulled out of it. Then there is the viewpoint. So this is the observations of the narrator or character in the scene. And I am guilty, as are many others, of head jumping. So like, you know, you have the thoughts of one person, then you go to the thoughts of the other person in the scene and it can be very disruptive. So I'm trying to work harder on that. And I'm sure many other people do as well, staying in the lane of the person that you're supposed to be during that particular scene or chapter. Then there's the narrative style. So you could have first, second or third person narrative. So the story can be told like I, you know, I saw this and I experienced that and, or, you know, the third person, which is usually like she um, experienced this. Um, I never really understood second <laughs> person narrative so much, but uh, 
it's out there. Google it and you will know. But it's important that you stay true to the story the entire time. Sometimes, though, we do pull in very creative license. Let's say you're throwing a villain into the book. You might throw their interpretation as first narrative or something like that. And then the rest of the book be third person narrative. I've seen it work. It's a little bit iffy, but again, that is up to the creative license of the author of the work. Then there are our tenses. You can have past, present, or even future tense, which is very rarely used. So mostly we use present or past tense, but it's important that you keep your tense consistent throughout the entire book so that, again, your reader is not jogged out of their experience of reading and being absorbed in your narrative. Then there we have a few tips on editing, and these can be a little bit, oh, look, I have some interesting other language there that is not supposed to be there, and that is a blooper. If anybody knows what it says, you can let me know, but um, <laughs> that's not supposed to be there. I was supposed to have edited that. So tips on editing, review your slides twice. <laughs> Uh, cut the fluff. So a lot of times we have a lot of extra stuff in a scene and it just bogs down the scene. It disrupts the pacing, makes it very, very slow and makes it very hard for the reader to slog through it all. So cut out what is unnecessary. Do you have a character or storyline that just doesn't add to the overall story? Maybe they need to go. Are you over explaining things? Maybe it needs to go and be more concise. And sometimes you have to be ruthless about it. Yes, this manuscript is your baby. And you want to coddle it and have it grow and take care of it. But sometimes you just have to say, yeah, those pages really weren't necessary. And cut the fluff. If you have to, reading out loud is a really great tip. It's super simple and it sounds kind of silly, but it's true. When you listen to something being read out loud or you try to read it out loud, you can find little things that your mind just skips over when you read that don't actually make sense when you read it out loud. And don't overthink. Go with your gut instincts. You've got this. So for line editing, this is an in-depth analysis of each line and how it contributes to the overall story. So you're looking for your flow, clarity, rhythm, you're looking at the language. Is it all similar? So if I'm using a formal tone versus a more slang, is it appropriate? Your sentence structure, uh, your overall tone of the book. You can do some fact checking with this. You might be moving or removing text or rewriting or breaking up or streamlining awkward sentences. I have a lot of awkward sentences that I have like a comma. I should be doing this the other way, I think. Nope this way still mirroring <laughs> I have a comma in it and um, really it should be two sentences so I find that I have to do a lot of that after that's one of my later editing funds copy editing this is more technical editing we're fixing your typos any inaccuracies and repetition um it also deals with like formatting your chapter sequencing. So like making sure it's one, two, three or chapter A, B, C. Um, so if it's all numbers, that they're all numbers not, and not, you know, one and then two, the word and then three, the number, right? Your dialogue tags are appropriate. Your punctuation is there. Your spacing is always the same after a sentence, things like that. Capitalization, making sure that your, you know, your proper nouns are used. You're looking at your grammar. Is it appropriate? Um, do we need to change something up with your formatting? So is, is um, you know, if you're indentating in one chapter, are you indentating the entire book? Or are we going to change that one chapter and have no indents? You're going to make sure that your spelling is correct and you have stylistic consistency the whole way through the manuscript. And then we have the final, final review, catching those typos and errors that you missed in all your other editing because you will miss something. It's estimated that for every 
what, 10,000 words, there's at least 10 errors in every book or something like that. I think that, I think that's the number. I'm not hundred percent certain, but there is an estimated average number of typos that get through to every book. And it's just the way it is. Um, and even books that are published by traditional publishing houses that are very famous, it still happens, but we try our best to proofread and check our punctuation and any other consistent inconsistencies and make sure that they are corrected before it goes to final publication. Now, the fifth little bonus is our mechanical. So the mechanical one is more if you are writing a specific style. So maybe you're the type of person who writes essays and you want to have it in the Chicago yeah, I can't speak Chicago manual style or the associated press style. I know when I went and did a lot of formal essays for school, they were always in the AP style and you had to make sure that it was done correctly. So frankly, I had a cheat sheet. <laughs> it was the best thing ever because every time we would open it up and be like, insert this here, insert that here, start your argument here. And I would just follow the format and spend a few hours on it and got half decent marks. So cheat sheets, if you can find them, they're very useful. I highly recommend them. Uh, not that we we're plagiarizing or anything like that. We weren't. We were just using it as a formatting style tool. And it literally actually said, start your argument here. Because <laughs> that's, that's how I did it. Set it up once and just use the format and repeat and rinse. <laughs> Rinse and repeat. Yeah. You know, it's been a day. It's been a day, people. Just just go with my flow. If I say something backwards, it is what it is. So those are the types of editing that um, I have outlined and explained to you. And if you found this at all helpful, I think that it was kind of just a brief overlay. But maybe if uh, you want, we can go through some of these editing styles on a manuscript and you can kind of see some examples and we can go from there. If you would like to throw it in the comments and make sure that you are subscribed so that you don't miss any other future lovely little tidbits and tips about writing. Have a great day. Happy reading and happy listening.